So now you're tasked to go back to the previous planets and collect the four remaining Millennium Gummies to power your ship and head to Nova. Now the game is opened up to you now. You can reasonably go to any planet you choose. But which one is the right option? Well, to start off, Pafuna is a definite no-go. There's a couple of attacks you need to do before you enter the dungeon that yields the Wind Millennium Gummy. Unfortunately, your adventure will quickly reach a screeching halt. Due to the dungeon design being pretty linear, you're, you're bound to encounter battles at some point, and their levels are far beyond yours at this point. The lowest level you'll encounter is level 39, which, even if you're slightly overleveled on the battles on Raisin, it's still going to be tough. Technically, you can still get through with proper planet alignment, gear command, even some luck. Levels can be gained, but you'll need to get a lot of fight on par with the, not only the first boss of the dungeon, but also the second boss. It's possible, but it'll just take a while. Same can also be said about Erd 2. It has less major battles, but the lowest enemy level when you start off is still level 36. Thankfully, grinding is a little safer, but more time consuming. Once you deal with the main story beats, the space leads will spawn outside Rio Villa. One, you can battle them over and over again, and although they're level 43, only one of them spawns in the battle and they don't have any sort of magic attack. Not only that, but you can easily heal and get fewer from battles and they'll respawn once you enter and exit a building. So although it takes a while, you'll be able to get through it all. But it'll be very boring, trust me. That just leaves Cassia and Grem. Gra Cassia is the intended first start, and we're going to be talking about in this section, but Grem isn't a bad option either. It's actually the best route for speedrunners. There are only three mandatory battles on Gren, and the highest one is only level 35. It seems a great item for not only the playthrough, but the run you might potentially go for. But we'll get to that later. But for right now, let's take a vacation to Granule Isle. Get it? It's a vacation. And the series is called Magical Vacation. It's not easy to fake this much happiness. When you ride your cosmic ship back to Cassia, you know, for the fourth time now, Walk all the way back to the docks and find both Kalaraste and Lord Persimmons right next to a boat. Talk to Kalaraste and say yes to her six hour voyage over to see the Granule Isle. Head north for some space police students to block your entrance. And somehow Kalaraste managed to enter, while well, you have to take the long way. Shame. Along the coastline, you'll find many rainbow shells. These are used for an NPC back on the mainland, but you require 50 of those rainbow shells to get some sort of reward out of it, so worry about that later. Continue south down to eventually find the little cat girl gremlin again, part fate. She tells you to meet her at Ambergris Academy in the east, where the Grandmaster, Sturgeon, would love to have a word with you. Head east and enter Ambergris Prep, and right next to the entrance, there's a warp point that you can get. I recommend getting this one. The next big thing is the fourth and technically last extra spell that you can obtain, the Brawly Book, which can teach the spell Brawly Wall. However, if you have a type of shell equipment, it'll change the ball to something more powerful, and it'll change up some attributes of it. Finally, the inn is in the upper north of the town, next to the exit, and the shop is in the far right of the town. It of course has some good equipment as always, but this is also where you can get the sparkle and shadow bombs, for you if you have the ability to throw the object element of your starter one. I recommend getting both. Once you're done now exploring the town, head to the big academy and go to the middle room where you'll find Sturgeon, the headmaster of the academy. He says he wants to get the Water Millennium Gummy and bring it back to the academy. He tells us part fates in the study room to the right, where the kid breaks out this cool cursed book and tells Madeline has read it. Epic, I guess. After all that, head north and steal back the treasure. So on the island, you'll find some fairly tough enemies. The first enemy in the chopper block is the Unicorn. Ain't nothing special about this one. He's the only Earth Mage that you'll find here, but he doesn't have any Earth Magic. He does have a nasty Horn Attack that can leave a mark though. Thankfully, he isn't that fast, so Chai and Lassie can damage him for free without any quick trouble. The next enemy is the Bloaterfish, and these guys are very deadly, similar to the Atomic Fire Bats on Raisin. Their main strategy is using Celestial Swap to get them powered up, and then proceeding to propel you with very strong hailstorms. First priority is making sure the water plant isn't powered up, so use your own Celestial Swap to counter them, then target them first, because they usually show up in groups. Then we have the Ceiling. These blue fellows are very similar to their counterparts the Mossling, having a Hula attack in the back and an easy block tackle attack, though it is quick. Be careful, they are stronger now. Next up is the Horn Mamai. Seemingly very slow enemies, though they can go for the slow speed with little HP, and they also have a lot of defense. Though don't worry about their offensive pow prowess, they don't really have a fast attack, it's pretty easy to guard. And finally, there's the Hangfish. 
These guys are quite deadly in some attacks. Firstly, they have Hailstorm, which can be pretty annoying if you're constantly getting sick from these attacks. And then you have a dangerous physical attack in Cosmic Rider, hitting everyone in the front row. It's impossible to block all the hits, so guard the one that you probably will get hit more. But the thing is, he's not that fast, even though he kind of looks like it. So, use the dark and light characters to take him out in the front. From the town to the Holy Pyramid, it's mostly straightforward, though it's basically just a linear maze. On the way, you'll find both rain Rainbow Shells and Defrost Tails. Pick up the Defrost Tails if you don't want to spend a lot on the shop. There's also two secret chests here, and it's going to be pretty easy since the bloater fish are going to constantly respawn the water planet onto its proper coordinates, so take the opportunity time to grab those when they're powering it up. Both are a little further into the maze, the first one is just left of when you enter the second area, where you'll find a raincoat for water mages. Heading a bit further north, you'll also find a soul tank for earth mages. Then you'll head north until you'll find Carl the next to an accessible warp point. Afterwards, head left and file the following space police troops. The Sergeant, although being level 35, is actually one of the easier mid-bosses. The gimmick here is these previously big riot shields, and they have two corresponding guards with attack that you can use. There's magic guard against magic attacks, and technique guard against physical attacks. They also have a fast charge attack, so be careful of that too. But aside from that, they only have 1200 HP. My recommendation is to stick all the physical strong hitters up front, and use magic when their shield is down, and when their shield is up, start using physical attack. They can dodge, which is very annoying, but it's nothing too cumbersome. After the fight, head inside the Holy Water Pyramid. The Holy Water Pyramid is again mostly just a series of right angle turns and going down multiple floors until you get to the bottom. And the enemies you'll find here are mostly dark creatures, so I recommend getting those sparkle bombs from the shop back in Ambergris Prep. The first enemy here is the Bone Box, which is similar to the Sarcophagual back at the Captus of Caverns having the same bats within attack, hitting all the party members, but now having the much more dangerous blood money attack, which combined with its solid defenses keeps it a fairly tough enemy, so be very careful. Next up is the Mummy Dog, of which they only have one attack and bite, but it's still fairly strong. They also have a lot of HP too, however they can be accompanied by two different enemies to help them out. First is the Dog Trainer, where, as the name suggests, trains the dogs to be stronger by increasing their stats. The other is the Dog Master, where if you defeat the mummy dogs, the master will resurrect them from the grave and now have a dark aura attached onto them. They're mostly exactly the same, except they have 50 more HP. Same attacks always, though. The best strategy is to take out the master slash trainer first before you start messing with the dogs. The last enemy you'll find is in the lower parts of the dungeon is the monster chest, perhaps the strangest enemies you'll find so far. Just by attacking them normally, they'll crumble to the ground, giving you no money and experience. They also have a quick attack and lady bitty bite, so what's the deal with these guys? Well, they could drop a very good item in the rock robe, but the only way for them to drop it is by stealing a certain damage range of the attack, specifically 120 damage to 140 damage. I recommend just using like a physical attack or some sort of item for that. If you do that, they'll drop it. Very strange. Again, this dungeon is again very straightforward. There's also not much treasure here. However, when you get to the bottom floor, there's much of the cursy tails behind the staircase, so if you want them, go ahead and grab them. Once you get into the part of the chamber, there's a massive pot that is directly below the space police UFO. If you read any of the uh, hard to read the symbols on the walls, it'll tell you to use fire magic to light the roof up. After that, warp to the exit pyramid and try to enter the second floor, only to be stopped by more Sergeant Space Police. The second verse, same as the first though, nothing different about this fight aside from the level you'll be at. Then enter the second floor where you witness a literal murder scene. Ready for everyone, everybody. In the room, you'll find a putty pee on the left chest and 3,500 beer on the right chest. Afterwards, head to the center chamber to find two space police heads trying to obtain the, the Millennium Gummy. Though, after you make your grand appearance, Avalon scolds his brother and takes his cap off, which just stinks up the place. Dear Lord, what is this character? So, in much better fashion, we take this by its side, so let's fight him. So Apollon is a strange, strange, strange man. Like, creepy strange. I wouldn't let my friends near him. Okay, so the gimmick with this guy is... 
the power of love. You get hit by sweet nothings, you can't attack them whatsoever. Even a special message that says you cannot hurt the ones you love. Don't even try healing with sword bad's fresh drop. Another metro up here is saying magic cannot mend a broken heart. Yikes. However, you can guard the chain rows, use an item on your member, and use the four spells. When he uses the move Hello Goodbye, he'll break the heart of the current infatuated member and bring love to the next one. I'm sorry, this is that was so wrong to say. And with the previous member will be at one HP, heal up them ASAP. He also has Celestial Slot to bring the water plant closer to him, and as for his actual attacks, he has the main one in the forest field, which will shoot four little water blasts at the opponent, and Ice Fromage, which is like super rare and I didn't even know he had it, which attacks all the party members. As for any strategy, well I really don't have much to say on this one. Depending on your luck, you can have a 1 in 6 chance for this battle to go fast or slow, because Sweet Nothings affects all the rows. Your strong character here is Mocha, so power him up with defenses, fevers, and jams to hit a strong boulder bash. But if he gets infatuated before or during the process, all I can really say is I hope you have lots of MP and frogs, because this might take a while. Just try to change your strategy depending on what your scenario is. Just be patient and defeat him to get the shampoo count, which I recommend you should put on Sorbet immediately. Although it can give you blind status, Sorbet's mostly always going to be in the back row. And this also defends you against some actual very deadly status ailments. Plus, also just look at this stat increase. This is very helpful. Well, let's wrap this thing up. After defeating the creep, he warps away the coward and he can finally enter the treasure room. Unfortunately, guess who rears his ugly mug in here? Yep, what did you expect? So, follow Carlisle through the coral maze and halfway through, watch him get robbed by his own assistant he needed help with. Absolutely pathetic. Even more pathetic is that Persimmons also gets robbed by a literal child in a cat suit. These are our villains, guys. But follow Parfait back to the Academy and quickly get the Water Millennium Gummy. Afterwards, talk to the headmaster about Madeline and head off to West. And watch Sorbet ruin her own future. Pretty cool. After you wake up, you're greeted by Bang Net, who tells you to immediately head off to Gren for an emergency. But before you leave, near the dock of the island, you'll find another hinge chest that contains a funny pea. Then head back to the ship and set a course to the next planet, preferably Gren. Okay, but we have just a few more things to talk about, and that includes the special spell. So, you have Brawly Ball. Once you use this 40 magic power spell, you will be able to tap the character when the ball's about to land on him to volley to everyone else on the, on the field. Once the six character lands, it will immediately go back to the one that was previously landed. Tap it right, and you'll hit the ball. Miss input any of the action, your attack will fail. So it's a very, very high risk and honestly not very good reward. You do get a pretty decent defense boost, so it's probably the second best spell to use in this scenario, but Celestial Shop is just way better in any sort of capacity. I recommend always constantly upgrading this just in case you really want to use it. It is a very silly move. And now it's time for... A new egg character! Work in progress title. Where today we're needed by everyone's favorite ND money hog that gives us points for spirits, Give it up for Gelato! This gangsta fish is one of seven egg characters of fame for multiplayer Amigo mode. He can really be fetched from 1, 15, 30, or 60 tags of cane. And the last one given from Gamelon back on Grim. In battle, Gelato has a couple of neat tricks hiding up his fins. His physical attacks is actually really useful this time if you're going for 100%. He'll use x Store, which randomly drives an enemy to drop an item. This includes rare equipment too. His signature attack is Compote, which he can lower an enemy's spirit stat. Also pretty nice. He also has Zapper War too. And finally, his out of battle ability is also useful when you get more beer out of battle. So technically it's not an out of battle, but it's all you really got. So overall, aside from having some really strange ways to level him up, this one's very useful. I hope you get him on your first pull. 